Hey, welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. And I want to welcome to the show now a big star. Probably one of the bigger stars we've had on this, this shindig, except for that second string defensive back we had on from the Jets <laughs> about three months ago. I can't remember his name. It's tough, <laughs> tough booking guests early on here. But uh, this guy's doing us a favor from the hit show Entourage and a bunch of other things. A kid I've met a few times, really nice kid. Uh, Kevin Connolly. Kev, what's up, man? What's going on, guys? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, thank, thanks going. for doing it. Yeah. Did the Islanders win tonight, Kevin? Islanders, I know you're on pins and needles with the Islanders. The Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. You happy to know? Yeah, we were uh, we were just discussing. I know you've been an LA guy for a long time, but you grew up in Long Island, is that right? That's true. Yeah. And uh, are you Knicks or Lakers? You know, honestly, I, I never. Uh, you know, Ben and I have had this. I'm not sure if we've had this conversation, but listen, I never really what was a basketball guy growing up. We were, right. you know, Yankee, Islander guys. I really got into basketball till later in life, so I've kind of made the, made the crossover kind of to the Lakers. Okay. Did you see how, oh, you hear how he stumbled through that? that yeah. He couldn't just say, yeah, I'm a Laker fan. Like, he had to stumble through. Well, no, because uh, I, I know what he's going through. As a New Yorker, you're probably a little ashamed of that, Kev. Well, I mean, well, you know, also, too, I mean, listen, I, I don't want to appear to be, because, uh, you know, nothing is worse than the bandwagon, which is, by the way, the, the Clipper bandwagon is, I mean, you wouldn't believe it. That's got to be so, it. that's got to be so annoying. I remember when the Clippers first uh, reared their ugly head as being decent, like in the early 90s. Like, you'd see Arsenio Hall was trying to take the Jack Nicholson part, and he was right. getting a dog pound going in the corner of the Clipper games. And, <laughs> you know, and, uh, that, 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 but L.A. is a bandwagon town, man. I mean, and it, it's sickening, right? Yeah, but this is what's happening with the Clippers. And granted, by the way, the Clippers are a great team, and they're a lot of fun to watch, but, you know, it's all of a sudden these, like, lifelong Clipper fans that you never knew. <laughs> I mean, right. I knew one or two, like, legit Clipper fans that now can't get seats to the game. You know? Yeah, you got... You, you're looking, you go, God, I never knew Ryan Reynolds was such a big Clipper fan. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Him and Sarah Michelle Geller seem to be loving the game. They're just... Well, yeah. also, I mean, look, the, you know, look, the Kings just won the Stanley Cup. Right. You know, you think that would, and that's been great for, you know, it's just great for, I mean, I'm, you know, Ben, I'll tell you, I'm a big hockey fan, so I, I, I love hockey. So it was nice to just see, you know, it, it get a little bit of attention. It didn't get nearly as much as it should have. So it's still mind. happening, hockey, for the rest of us, right? Yeah. Is it still happening? <laughs> It's happening right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. In That's fact, great. the shortened season is, 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 is great for hockey because, you know, not only it, the season is so short that their East, the Eastern Conference isn't even playing the Western Conference. Right. So essentially each game is worth four points. Well, <laughs> well, listen, I, I, I understand, though, what you mentioned that he was uh, hesitant in saying he's a Laker fan. I understand. Like, I, I grew up in North Jersey, uh, right outside of Manhattan, right, right by Newark Airport. Uh, the, the, the part of New Jersey that people make fun of. The arm, the, I grew up in the armpit. And, um, and I moved out to California to do a TV show when I was 26. And the first time you do an L.A. kind of thing, it's hard to admit to your friends that you did it because you're looking at a lot of abuse. And, uh, and I mean, so becoming a Laker fan, you're going to be hesitant. <laughs> I think, and by the way, I do. I take a lot of heat from my from my buddies back home. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's also, too, in L.A., it's the one thing that people have in common. Right. No, and I know. When the Lakers are making a playoff run, you know, you can actually look at a guy at the, at the, at next to you at the light and be like, oh, normally, you, could, you know, you could get shot for doing that. But Right. It's when... when, it's when uh, run, you know, everybody... I don't know. It's like the one thing that strangely bands the city together. It's when Mario Lopez and Michael Douglas actually could have something to talk about at a red light. <laughs> exactly. I, uh, no, no, well, well, you talk about... <laughs> You talk about being a, a Laker fan. That's bad enough. I remember the first time I told my buddies I had a macchiata. <laughs> they wanted to strang, <laughs> strangle me, string me up. Um, I'm gonna give, I'll give a brief history of, of, of me and Kevin. I don't know if we actually met, although I was on Entourage. He, uh, no, we met when you, you did the Stern Show once when I was there. I did the Stern Show, yeah. Yeah. A couple uh, times, but right. that was the first time. But we actually even go back a little bit. We, you were on, I used to date Nikki Cox. I know, I know that, yeah. I have Nikki Cox's entire dating history on my phone. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> no, I know that, of course. Yeah. You, you yeah. were on that show with her, too. Right, right. Right, right, right. right. Very professional, and, Kevin, by the way. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and so I think at one point, but that was, that was many, that was many, many years. Right, right. And then, uh, yeah, and then you were on the show, but I, I was not in the scenes. I wasn't there that day. But everybody was, 
Yeah, no, I, I um. And that's like one of the famous episodes too. Everybody loved it. Well, you no, know, I did. I did the Norm show, Norm Macdonald sitcom, for two years, and one of the full years, Nikki Cox was on the show. And uh, she was dating Bobcat Goldthwait at the time. Right. And 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 no offense, Kev. I mean, you're you're definitely a happening guy. But Norm and I were going on uh, Kevin Connolly and Bobcat Goldthwait. Norm and I are like, well, we might have a shot. You know. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, listen. I, I, look, Bob's a nice guy and everything. <laughs> I, I don't think he and I go in the same sentence. No, you're right. I agree with you, Kev. I'll give you that. But, yeah. but after Bobcat, I'm like, well, you were a younger. You were Norm in that sense either, really. <laughs> 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 no, but, but, but you know, when, be, let's while we're talking about it, you and Norm really, honestly. <laughs> no, but Norm would say stuff like she, she like she would do a, a rehearsal, uh, in in a literally in like a twelve year old boy's guinea t shirt without a bra. <laughs> yeah. And she had this huge black guy. I think his name was Kyle, Clay. who was who was her, uh, her her bodyguard because I guess yeah, she got Clay. insane stalker. I think he type. may still be her bodyguard, strangely enough. Yeah. Play, yes. That guy. All that guy talked about was was getting laid. It was hilarious. That's all he talked about. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, Norm was so funny because she's dating Bobcat Goldthwait, and every day at lunch, like Norm would go like. Hey man, she's dating Goldthwait. And I'd be like, yeah, he goes, I don't know, should I try to bang her? <laughs> <laughs> and as far as I know, he, he never he never did. But but when I booked Entourage, my agent told me and said they made an offer to me, and I was flattered by it because I love the show and I I got the script and I flew into LA right after doing the Stern show, and my agent said to me, Hey, uh uh Kevin Connolly and um uh, and I forget, who's the guy who created the show? I'm sorry. Doug Allen, yeah. Uh, uh, Doug Allen, great guy. They said they're going to Dantown as they want to take you out to dinner as soon as you land in L.A. And it was like the most flattering thing. I had to work the next day. And right. I said, well, that really makes you feel welcome. I got on a flight. It was a 13-hour flight because of delays. I went to Seattle. I got delayed to Phoenix. And I missed the dinner. And I'm like, damn, it would have been more cooler to go to the dinner at Dantown's with you guys than to shoot the episode. Yeah, and Doug is a huge, you know, Doug is a huge fan of yours. So right. he was, you know... Yeah, he, he was he was fired up to have you on the show. But but then I, I'll show you what kind of guy this guy this guy Kevin is. So a few months later, I'm in L.A. and uh -huh. uh, I'm going. I'm with David Spade, who's a friend of mine, and we go to. Uh, I was with my girlfriend at the time, my sister, and we went to STK on La Cienega, and we're pulling up. And Spade made the reser made the reservations, and I still think Spade somehow knew you guys were going to be there because he just loves. <laughs> he just loves. We were it. shooting out. Front, yeah, right, right. right. We, he just loves attention. We walk. We're walking into the restaurant, and Entourage is shooting an episode coming out of. <laughs> and Kevin is the star of that scene. And uh, Spade's like, oh, uh, hey, man, I don't know how this happened. I don't know. How, uh, what's up? Like that. So, so he walked in. I stopped and said hi to Kevin, and, and uh, Doug, Doug had left already. We go inside, and, and Kevin bought us all dessert, which at SDK right. is like about four grand. You know? well, right. Also, I will, you, listen, and, and I, you know, I wasn't sure. I wanted to send you guys around a drink. Right. But, <laughs> but I wasn't sure. I was like, you know what? I don't want to, you know, whatever. So I sent... Uh, you know, I sent you, and then you left me a really nice, a really nice voicemail. Yeah. You know about the desserts, and then Spade was like, "Yeah, I saw Spade, and he was like, yeah, we were talking about that. It was a little fruity of you to send, uh, send uh, dessert." <laughs> he said that. Yeah. A little fruity. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 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 Tough Guy, Mr. Iron Man, David. But... Yeah. I was like, you know, listen, I didn't want to be a bad influence, so I thought, you know, send him some desserts. Which, by the way, you're right, a round of drinks probably would have been cheaper. Yeah, exactly. So I, like I said, I didn't want to, didn't want to tempt you. But. Uh, no, I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate the fourteen hundred dollar creme creme brulee. <laughs> creme uh, from SDK. Hey, speaking of Entourage, Kev, what's going on with this Entourage movie? Yeah. How do we get Artie in the Entourage movie? <laughs> well, the script, the script is done, you know, and now it's a matter of, you know, listen, it, it, the, the, yeah, it's got to be done at a price, you know. There's no. Right. Hundred million dollar version. So once everybody comes down to earth and realizes that they're not going to get paid ten million dollars each for the yeah. movie, I think it's going to be. It's just a matter of hashing out some sort of business things. But I, I think it's going to work out. Apparently the, the script's really good and everybody's really happy. So maybe by the you know maybe by the summer we're shooting that. That's the plan. Who's going to make uh, the awkward? Uh, well, <laughs> who's going to have the awkward conversation with Jerry Ferrara that he has to gain the weight back? <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, he, you know, Jerry is like just like trim and fit and he's on fire but you know like he always said doug would say to him jerry what are you doing you know <laughs> what, what, what does happen to him and jerry would be like doug it's my life it's a whole thing <laughs> You know? He does. So, he looks. Uh, he looks fantastic. It's not about losing weight for Jerry. He's lost weight, and now he's the most diesel guy in he the room. He looks road. really good. I, I always tell him, I'm like Jerry, you literally are a meathead. <laughs> he's like a meathead. He kind of walks around, and he's like, you know. So, uh, but but it's it's great. It's great for Jerry. And you know, he, I mean, Jerry quit smoking. I mean, the guy's completely changed his life around. And, oh, that's uh, good. 
you know, that's more important than, than, than the show, and Doug knows that. You know, right. So. Well, I've always lived my career where uh, health came second, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, now, uh, now let, let me ask you something about Entourage. Uh, that show is great because th what the show is about kind of happened to you guys in real life. You All you guys became enormous stars, like like Adrian's character does in, in the in, on the show, um, and, uh, you know, still are. Well, how much of that show is autobiographical to Wahlberg's life? Do you, I mean, is no, it? I think, I think this, it, it started out as sort of modeled characters loosely based on a few guys. Right. And then from there, it becomes a show, and it just sort of takes on a life of its own. Yeah. So I think, like, initially the characters are named after people, but, you know, come second or third season, I think it's just... It just becomes about stories that you that that you've heard. A lot of things are combinations of stories or or rumors or just kind of old wives' tales that Hollywood old wives' tales that you've heard. And we just kind of you know Doug would say, yeah, I heard you know this story or you know, and and, and everybody has a different version of it. Right. And we would just do sort of uh, our version of it. But uh, you know, people people would ask me like, hey, you know, uh, you know, like the life imitating art thing and. And with the lines ever blurry, and it's funny because it, at the time it didn't really feel like that. But looking back, I mean, you know, it's coming up on ten years. I That's mean, right. We did the pilot in two thousand and three. Wow. You know? So it's coming up on ten years. So it, at the time, it doesn't feel like it. But when you look back, you go, Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, the lines were blurry. It's like you know, it was happening to everybody. You know, at the same time, we all went through this kind of this thing. Yeah, you know. So. uh but that's why we're all sort of tight, as tight as we are, even though we don't see see each other as much. But uh, you know, we're, we're 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 brothers. I mean, Jerry and I and, and Doug see a lot of each other. But right. you know, Kevin Dillon's in Malibu, and Adrian lives in New York. I mean, we just don't we don't see each other enough. So we try to make it a point. But that's why the the movie is going to be. I mean, I, I I honestly just can't wait. It's just just to get back on on the set with the guys is going to be going to be a blast. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be fun. The reason I asked that question about Wahlberg is because when I was doing the Norm show, we shot it on the Warner Brothers lot and we shot it during the same time that Mark Wahlberg was shooting a the perfect storm, and he sh th th that big stage 16 where they, they they gutted out the bottom and they put a boat inside, and he, they were there for like four months. And uh, he would come into the commissary sometimes when we were there, and there was a kid he always hung out with who dressed exactly like turtle dresses, right. and and he sort of was like a white kid who acted black. Right. And I guess, like, Mark would sit down and tell him he wanted a cheeseburger or something, and he would scream. Now, this is like the cast of Everyone Loves Raymond is there, Peter Boyle, like, we're sitting there, <laughs> the, 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 the friend, some of the friends. Exactly. Like well, tea grips. Always kind of, I mean, I'm still <laughs> laughing about you and Norm Macdonald thinking that you guys can get checked out. Um, I, can't go, I can't help but to go back to that. Sorry. Now, listen, I'll give you Norm's list. It's pretty impressive. Mine, not so much. But <laughs> oh, Norm, sure. I don't doubt it. But, uh, it. but, but so, so I guess, I guess, like Mark would say in the commissary, like he wanted a cheeseburger or something. This kid, this kid who reminds me of Turtle would get up and go, scream out, the kid wants a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. They call him a, the kid, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, you know, and Mark, Mark's good to, Mark's good to his friends and he takes, yeah. takes good care of all of them. But, you know, ironically, too, the guy that's grown up more than anybody is Mark. Right. Oh, I could, you could tell. I mean, it's crazy yeah. what a different guy he is now than, than when we first started. I mean, he's like married. You don't see him out and about. I mean, he's just, he's grown up so much. And, the guy, the, Mark, Mark's the producer of Boardwalk Empire. I know, I know. I mean, the guy's like, a, the guy's a mogul. I mean, Absolutely. Him and Steve Levinson have turned this company into this, like, juggernaut. Yep. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. You know? So, good for them, you know. And uh, it was it was there. It was they, they just were looking, sitting around one day, looking around at all their, you know, idiot friends going, we got to make a show about these clowns. Right. You know, uh, and that that's literally how the idea was hatched. And it was, I, at one point, I think... The first idea was like, hey, should we do a reality show? And Mark was like, yeah, right. You know? <laughs> you know, and then they just did it, and, you know, HBO, uh, HBO bit. And to say they've stayed in business would be an understatement. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, you know, Mark's the kind of guy, he, he conducts himself in a very classy way, and he seems to be a good businessman, but he also has the combination of that. Yeah, and well, he can also, off, yeah, he can lay you out, too, yeah. at any moment. Yeah, by the way, he will gladly beat you up. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I had a moment, I had a moment that I hope he forgets, but I'm going to bring it up now because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but I, uh, when I was doing that show, there was a, the hottest chick I ever banged, you know, besides my girlfriend, now, okay. um, was, was in Playboy Line. Lingerie. It was a Playboy lingerie chick, and uh, when we would get chicks, 
uh, at a bar to, to, to come meet us at the, at, you know, the lot. Like, that's a perfect aphrodisiac. Like, we had a pass to drive on because we were regulars on the show. And I mean, Kev, you know this move, probably. Right, right, right. And, and uh, we would... Drive on. Yeah, we would get a golf cart. I got a golf cart, and I would drive her all around, uh, you know, I'd show the old Western Doing town. And yeah, right, exactly. Look, that's where they Killing do... Island. <laughs> that was really the island. <laughs> right, I would show her everything. So, uh, and it usually worked. It was a closer. So there's one chick, uh, you know, I was, trying to, I was trying to bang her, and I get her on a golf cart, and we're driving around. Around, and it was while they're doing a perfect storm. And Mark, I guess, was just taking a break. He was uh, on the phone, and then he was just sitting down, hanging out. And of course, this girl sees him and like completely forgets I'm even alive. <laughs> and and looks and goes, "Oh my God, that's Mark Wahlberg!" And he was about 15 feet from us. And just to make myself look tough and seem like I didn't care, I oh said, boy. "I said, please, honey, he's a jerk off." Oh my God! <laughs> now, I've never, now I've never met the guy before. <laughs> oh boy! And she and she was impressed by that. She goes, "Wow!" And then out of the corner of my eye, he he he, he got up. <laughs> and now I'm saying to myself. Uh, what if he comes over here and kicks my ass? <laughs> right. Because as he got up, I realized this is a guy who could beat me up. Yeah, and, 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 he, and it's not like he hasn't done that. <laughs> no, I know. I said, I said, I might have said that too loud. I might have said that too loud. And if it, 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 listen, it ended up working. Uh, I ended up banging her, but uh, it could have went <laughs> totally. It could have went totally the other way, where he came over, beat me up, and had sex with her in front of me on the golf course. <laughs> And uh, he probably has done that before. Yeah, if you see if you see him, apologize for me. But uh, well, like we said, let's just let that one be dead. Yeah, I, I don't know why I even brought it up. 